question for an American hero, astronaut Rick Supas. Thank you. Thank you. I think by now you've gathered I'm not just a customer. However, just like you, I'm a service provider. When I commanded that mission, the STS-90 mission back in 1998, I took the perspective as the commander of this venture, this eight-year-in-preparation venture, that the people we are doing this mission for, the scientists who had devoted a big chunk of their careers and lives in preparing the experiments, the public who invested their confidence and money and, and effort in us in the human space program, they were all our customers. We needed to provide service to them. So in that sense, I'm exactly like you. Now, I come from a very technical background. I observed that many of you did not as I watched, walked around. That's okay. That was not the purpose of this exercise today. In fact, I helped by uh, interviewing some of the kids, and wow, that was so exciting. And one of them said something profound. I said, what, do you, what was the most fun thing you were doing today? Thinking, you know, I'm a technical guy, rockets and stuff. She said, oh, it's all the people I got to work with. Isn't that what it's about? You know, today over the, the next 30 minutes or so, I want to share with you my experiences in a very different career field, flying into space, what I've done. But keep in mind that we have so much in common. It's about providing service to others. And we're going to start with uh, a couple of stories, a couple of nature stories, actually, metaphors, if you will. Let's start with, uh, I'll take a poll here. You've got two images on the screen. You've got an eagle, a lone eagle flying high. It looks magnificent, doesn't it? Our national symbols, magnificent bird. You've also got a penguin rookery, very crowded, chaotic, looks a little confused in there, perhaps even a little smelly, you know, in, in that kind of environment. Which one of those two images best portrays the real world workplace? <laughs> yeah. Oh, of course we all get it. <laughs> the penguin rookery, absolutely. And what happens is that one penguin leader leaves the rookery and goes down by the edge of the ice. Uh, others start to follow. And then that brave penguin leader dives into the water, facing all those threats there, the, the sharks, the seals, the uh, budget cuts, all of the things, all of the threats that we face, but does it anyway. And what happens? They, what happens? Guys, you've all seen March of the Penguins. They all follow, right? Exactly. We don't have to be the lone eagle to be a leader. We don't have to have the charisma of a John F. Kennedy. We can be that brave little penguin leader who recognizes it. Well, you know what? I know what the right thing to do here is. I'm going to set an example. I'm going to influence for good, and I'm going to have the courage to try. And as we head out and do that, people will follow. They recognize that. It's been my privilege on uh, three separate occasions to break those bonds of gravity, to go fly on his technology, to fly into space, and partake of what has been called the greatest human adventure. But also, it's a great venture, one that requires teamwork, leadership, innovation, peak performance at the very limits of human capabilities to really be successful. But the keys to success in that venture are the exact same things, really, when you get down to it, when you boil it down to the essence, that you will need... Rick Searfoss, nine years in the United States Astronaut Corps, 40 days in orbit, three NASA shuttle missions, crew member and mission commander, sharing his experiences and skills with audiences all over the country. His topics range from effective team building to adaptability and peak performance. He has contributed to National Geographic magazine, the Discovery Channel, the BBC, and Dr. Stephen R. Covey's book, The Nature of Leadership. The component which I believe absolutely firmly is the single most important thing for a leader to have, and that is trustworthiness. The ability to not only have incredible competence and that people can recognize you're a real expert in your field, but also that they will trust you and recognize your integrity is foremost and there in front of everything else. Obviously, we have to have that as we develop uh, the skills and the ability to trust each other going to space. But it's crucial and absolutely the single most important thing in your dealings with other people. And every role that you take on, you should consider yourself in a leadership role. You lead your customers. You teach them. You develop solutions to their problems. Definitely leadership roles. And absolutely the most important thing you can bring to them is uh, the worthiness of their trust. But there was one individual, Deke Slayton. How many of you have heard of Deke Slayton? Probably everyone. And one of the original seven astronauts. So Deke Slayton's there at this reunion with his wife. And uh, he made it a point to go around and personally meet all of the rookies. And he came up to my wife and I. 
and said, well, welcome aboard. We're really glad you're here. Where'd you come from? I told him, Edwards, oh, it was great. I had a great time there when I was a young test pilot. And I went, you know, we're so glad you're here. And you guys are going to contribute so much. We have so much going on. And it was phenomenal. It's that beyond respect. It's that considering the seeds of greatness are with anyone and taking it to the next level of reaching out and pulling them in. Great lesson to me and something I will always treasure. Now, as far as execution on a daily basis goes, I come from a very, very dynamic business. You know, flying fighter aircraft, uh, test flying projects uh, in the astronaut business. Things happen in a real hurry. In fact, we have a saying in that business, nothing is so bad that you can't make it worse. And that is very, very true. <laughs> Think about it for a second. In order to not make things worse and in a, frame it in a more positive light, to move forward in a positive way on daily execution, you have to apply correct principles. Preparation is fundamental. This no stone unturned preparation, this willingness to do your homework. You know what? I think to be successful in sales, that's the exact same kind of preparation you need to go through. I think, and again, I would commend the company and this group because that's what you've been doing for the last several days. And those of you in particular who aced those exams through, that's indicative of that level of preparation, of knowing all of the technical details and specs and every question that your customer might throw at you regarding your products, having an answer for them. Now, Greg mentioned in the introduction that um, I was the chief judge for the Ansari X Prize. How many people have heard of that? Quite a few. A tech-oriented group. That's what I expected. Uh, for those of you that haven't, a couple years ago, you may have seen on the news, there was this little uh, rocket ship that went to the edge of space, did it twice within two weeks, and it did it totally on private funds. That was the X Prize. That's what won that competition. I was out there on the desert in California, in Mojave Desert, when this happened. A phenomenal electricity in the air as people saw history being made. And I've reflected an awful lot after that. You know, how did this come to be? They were applying the correct principles of setting the bar high and having an amazing passion for their work, of something that was very important. I saw it come to pass. It is a great model and an example for what truly can happen when you pull the correct principles together with respect to purpose. You see, rocket science isn't always rocket science. You know, we, we, there are ways and, and times where you can judiciously simplify even a complex business like this. Now, you have a pretty complex network. The whole the Discover network, I'm sure if we got into all the details and incredible complexity to make all of this play together, both on the human side and, and the technical side and the IT aspects and so forth. So there's a lot going on there. But I would submit that you, each of you, have plenty of opportunities with your own knowledge and understanding on the far side of complexity to strive for those elegant solutions. So one day, one of these pilots is flying along one of the islands, and there's a lot of penguins down there. And he sees a whole row of penguins lined up on the rocks. And as he flies by one direction, he notices, and he's at low altitude, a couple hundred feet, he notices the penguins are following him like this. He thinks, well, hey, that's pretty cool. He turns around, comes back the other way. They follow him again. So being the mischievous fighter pilot he is, he flies out to sea, comes straight at those penguins, and they're looking at him as he comes up, and then they go all the way back over and tip over. <laughs> the first known instance of penguin tipping. Okay. Now, now, what's the lesson for us? The lesson is that people you serve, whether they're internal to the company or your cust ultimate customers, they want simple, elegant solutions. They don't want to be tipped over. And you have the power to tip them over easily, just like that Harrier pilot in his fast jet could do that to those penguins. But instead, you need to think of the creative ways to make elegant solutions. Rick Searfoss, launching teams, exploring leadership. As shuttle commander for the STS-90 Neurolab mission in 1998, Rick Searfoss built a team so intricately synchronized that hundreds of neurological experiments were completed, far beyond the ambitious goals of this, the most complex space research mission ever. As a commander, my job is to work the matrix. Now, that's nothing more than having the right spirit of collaboration and understanding, whether you're in a formal leadership position or not, that all of the relationships around you, you need to build and strengthen those. It's not just communications to solve problems. It's communications with a long-term perspective to build the relationships to strengthen the matrix that you're part of. I believe that an understanding of tradition and an, an appropriate view of history is important. Winston Churchill said that the farther you can look back in history, the more clearly you can see the future. And I, I believe that's a correct, true principle. So this happens to be Greece uh, from space. That's Athens, Corinth, ancient Sparta was over here. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that Doug actually had direct contact with guys like Socrates and Plato. 
But I believe that he brings a wealth of experience. 90% effort is not good enough. This is an external fuel tank. It weighs about 65,000 pounds. It's empty. Filled up with about four or 500,000 pounds of liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen to fuel the space shuttle. You know, when we go to orbit, it almost makes it there with us. It gets to 98% of the speed. The metaphor for us, I think it's fantastic. 98% doesn't hack it. He's got to be 100% effort. At the same time, it needs to not be uh, crashing forward with all airspeed and no direction. You need to have the agility or the ability to quickly change the direction you're going in light of changing circumstances and events with your projects or the environment or whatever's going on. I had the chance to work with a, another entrepreneurial new space group out in California. Very small company with about 35 people in it, and I get to test fly their rocket-propelled technology demonstrator aircraft. It's the only liquid-fueled rocket-propelled airplane in the world. It's a phenomenal project, and it's just the tip of the iceberg for some other great projects that we're uh, going to move forward with. They understand speed and agility. I'm going to talk just a little bit about a different aspect of innovation. Now, I know that's one of your key, key values, and when it comes to bringing innovative products and services to market, that's generally what we talk about and think about when we think about innovation in the business sense. But I'm going to come at it from my background as an operational guy, as a, as a pilot and in the astronaut business. Uh, it's very much line operations. And the kind of innovation that you have to practice in that is not producing a new widget necessarily, but it's in tweaking and sometimes very incremental, small, clever little changes to the way you do business. You know, we don't have to be a brilliant, creative genius uh, off in our own little world to be innovative. Every one of us needs to think through what are the processes I apply? What are the things I do? How do I interact with others? And how might we tweak them just a little bit to get a little bit better? You add those up, you integrate those over the sum of a company like yours, and it's powerful. Well, let's wrap up with just a very short video clip here. It's going to be kind of a contrast. We're going to show, with no sound, a little bit of a shuttle landing from the, the technical perspective, the long-range cameras there at Kennedy Space Center. And then we're going to cut to a clip that my daughter took. I'll see the rest of my family is And I will challenge you right now to take two very different views of your work responsibilities, your situation. One is recognizing that, yeah, I'm in a technical field. I need to stay abreast of that. I need to uh, perform in that area. But also recognize I'm in a human field. I exercise influence on others in a formal and in an informal way. I can help build up teams. I can make my organization more effective. Now, I hope after our last hour together, you're reflecting on the human side of my experiences. And, and as I've shared some of those emotions and thoughts with you and, and ways that I think have helped me to reach greater heights in my career, I hope you're taking the principles on board, comparing them to the activities that you need to do, and uh, preparing yourself to spring from great heights that you're already at up to the next level. I have just loved working with this group, preparing to talk to you, sharing some of myself with you. And for you, let me close with the fact, and it is an indisputable fact, that your efforts can have a global effect, not just for your company, but for the people that you love and that you serve and that you're there for. So keep it up, keep reaching those greater heights, and all the best. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. It's just been wonderful to share this hour with you. Thank you. Rick Searboss, launching teams, exploring leadership. For more information, contact the provider of this video.